Estuaries are bodies of water which are found where rivers and streams meet the ocean. Their unique qualities place them among the most productive ecosystems in the world. Because of this, many different types of animals rely on estuaries for food, breeding, and migration. Not only do they nurture biodiversity, but they help purify water, produce fish, store carbon dioxide, and protect shorelines from floods and erosion. Estuaries are really important habitats and um, really interesting to study because they straddle the ocean and the freshwater inputs. And so sometimes they can be a mix of both. Sometimes they can be filled mostly with freshwater. Sometimes they can be um, mo filled mostly with ocean water. And so they really, they are very dynamic. And so the species that you're going to see, the water quality that you're going to see is going to change hour to hour, day to day, week to week, season to season. And in these environments, it's, we have what's called brackish water, which is a mixture of salt water and fresh water. And that creates a really specialized habitat for a lot of plants, animals, um, various wildlife. And so it serves as really important habitat for a variety of things, such as migratory birds that use it as they stop along their route. Um, it serves as breeding habitat for a lot of commercially important fish and it's home to a lot of plants as well as invertebrates such as crabs. There isn't many areas left in Southern California like this. Most of them have been filled for development, about 90% of them. So they're kind of a rare habitat and the transition zone is important for a lot of species, especially aquatic fish species like the tidewater goby, which is endangered and the, the Southern California steelhead trout. And the tidewater goby is a small fish, two to three inches long. It lives on the sandy bottom of the estuaries. It can't live for a long time in ocean water or fresh water, so it's really relegated to living just in our small estuaries. The tidewater goby is just one example of an animal that thrives in our local estuaries. The flora and fauna that live in these areas are dependent on the delicate mix of fresh water and salt water. To maintain this balance, ensuring the health of these diverse and complex habitats extends to us all. Our estuaries and lagoons are very important to, to the society here in Santa Barbara, to our community. They're important for recreation, they're important for our economy, uh, areas to gather, areas for recreation, but our estuaries have also been degraded over the years. They've been uh, polluted, they've been littered, they've been diverted, dredged and filled. What little is left of these lagoons, we want to try to improve so that they're operating as optimal or as best as possible and we want to make sure that the water quality is as good as we can make it and that there's native plants around it and that uh, we have uh, the right conditions for those fish um, to live and survive. One of the ways the health of our watershed is measured is through regular water quality testing. In the city of Santa Barbara, this work falls to the dedicated staff of the city's Creeks Division, whose main purpose is the stewardship of our watersheds. So the test results give us a, a baseline of what's out there. Um, and then we can look at that and over time see if we are making improvements with projects that we've completed. And then also shows us where we might still need to make improvements on. So if there may be specific watersheds that um, might be high in a particular pollutant. So if we find a pollutant here, we know that pollutant's coming from somewhere upstream. And that gives us a chance to then try to go back upstream and, and we can test air, different tributaries and see where that might be coming from. Extensive testing includes measuring for bacteria, pH conductivity, oxygen levels, and expands even more during storms to test for heavy metals, automotive pollutants, and nutrients associated with pesticides and herbicides all of which are indicators of the health of these fragile ecosystems. Our estuaries and lagoons are known as nurseries of the sea because of the important breeding and feeding habitat they provide for many fisheries. And one example is the halibut. Um, we all like halibut. Uh, it's consumed widely across the United States. Young halibut spend time in the estuaries shortly after they're hatched from their eggs in order to protect themselves from predation of larger fish out in the ocean. So some species are specialized to be tolerant of broad ranges of salinity and temperature. And others will just come in and out with the predominantly fresh water or predominantly saline water. So you don't necessarily know what you're gonna find until you get there and start sampling. 
And we do, we have added in the last few years uh, bioassessment of our estuaries. And so that is going to the estuary and taking from a small area, um, collecting all of the um, small aquatic invertebrates that are there and then identifying them and classifying them and trying to see if we can find um, unique sets of organisms for particular, particular estuaries. To help keep the estuaries vital, one of the things that experts recommend is not to breach the sand berm where the lagoon meets the beach. Breaching t occurs naturally in these estuaries, typically during the winter months when there's enough rainfall and storm surge to break down these sand berms that have built at the end of lagoons. Artificial breaching typically takes place during summer months for a variety of reasons. Sometimes people want easier access to the ocean. Sometimes there's a smell coming from the lagoon and people try to break down that sand berm. Now the problem with that is species that live in these lagoons have adapted to the natural cycle that estuaries take. And so when you artificially breach during a time of year when it doesn't typically happen, it really upsets the life cycle that these species have adapted to live in. Because of that, uh, we don't like to see those berms on the beach breached, in other words, broken, and then the water spilled out. What that can do is, for instance, with the Tidewater goby, they're a pretty small fish and they're not super strong swimmers. It can actually wash them out into the ocean and they die. And if they're really small, when they breed in the summer, it can also uh, wash the young out and they get killed. So. Physically, there's issues with it, and then there's issues with the water itself. When it drains, the water be, it can, it can lower the, the level of the lagoon, then it reduces the amount of habitat for, the, for all the aquatic species in there. It can change water quality and dissolved oxygen and lots of things. There are many steps you can take in your daily routine that directly affect the health of our watersheds. Don't throw your trash or anything else in there and pick up after your dog around the perimeter of the lagoon and, and things like that, just to keep it clean and healthy. And then if you live further up the watershed, we don't want people dumping things into their storm drains or into the creek anywhere along the way, because that'll eventually end up here. One of the most important things is to reduce use of, uses of pesticides. Pesticides um, are used to target particular damaging insects in your yard and garden, but as soon as they get washed off, they're poisoning every living aquatic insect that's in a creek or estuary. And we have found high levels of some of the newer pesticides, such as um, the neonicotinoid pesticides in our creeks and estuaries. And we educate the public about the importance of these habitats so that they'll know they're important areas to protect. And one way we do that is we do annual creek cleanups in the area where we lead groups of volunteers out along our creeks and our estuaries, picking up litter, as well as educating the volunteers about the importance of the estuaries and lagoons, the species that occur there, and the reasons why it's important to protect them.